So we're going to be looking at the Kirchhoff EQ from 3Body Technology. Now this is something I'm personally really excited about. This for me is the ultimate dynamic EQ and static EQ. I mean, it's great static EQ um, and has some innovative features in just in that area. But as a whole package, as dynamic EQ, it has so many features, everything that, uh, that I've been missing in a single EQ. And there's a lot of great dynamic EQs out there. I've tried them all. I've got a lot of them and they're always missing something for me. <laughs> um, you know, it'll have this feature, but it doesn't have that feature. It'll have that feature, but it, and it's, I've always found it quite frustrating. Why can't you just put all these features there together in one? They're, they're so useful. And the Kirchhoff EQ has them all and it's done really, really well as well. So, and there's some really innovative technology in there on top of all of that. So what kind of features am I talking about? You might be thinking dynamic EQ, what's, what's the big deal with different features? Well, I'll list a few that I personally find in either vital in some situations or just really um, useful. So for example, the ability to change the slope of the bell. Most dynamic EQs don't, they give you a cue, but no ability to change the slope. Now to me, that is so useful. In some situations, being able to control the slope makes the difference between it really being effective at fixing a problem and not being effective without um, taking too much away. Um, and it can sometimes be far more transparent to have a, a different slope than you need to be able to make a, a, a steeper slope. Um, and you know, it's just useful in lots of situations. So there's a sloping of the belt, very few dynamic EQs have that. Um, there is attack and release, gotta have that. Um, fab filter, you can change the slope, no attack and release. On this, attack and release, but not just that, peak or RMS. Um, so, that's another great feature that you can choose the detection level there. Again, most of them don't have that. Another one that many of them are missing is a gain control. There are some that have a gain control, like the DSP one has a gain control, but it's missing these other features. So gain control meaning um, an F6 has a gain control too, actually, but again, it's missing these other features. So a gain control meaning that you can set the maximum gain that it's going to do. So the gain, in other words, the maximum gain is independent of the threshold and that can just be so useful in some situations being able to do that. Um, so it's got that, um, it's got expansion as well as compression and a sophisticated interplay between those uh, two things. Um, so it's really amazing. I mean, it's something else. There's no other dynamic EQ that comes even close to this thing. And it's got, um, some innovative features as well. So it's something that I find so useful. Um, and this has it amazingly, and that's the ability to separate out the detection frequency from the compressed or EQ'd frequency, the dynamically EQ'd frequency, you can move it. It can listen to the whole frequency spectrum and compress in relation to that. So relative to that. So we're gonna have a look at that, show you the features and I hope you find this useful. Um, if you do, please do like the video and ring the bell and subscribe. Uh, really helpful to me and really appreciated. And so let's have a look. Okay, so here we are with the Kirchhoff EQ by Three Body Technology. And this is the most amazing EQ I have ever come across. Um, it has completely, it's replaced Pro-Q3 for me. Uh, I've not used Pro-Q3 since I got this or any of my other EQs, it, it, because it does everything. Every other EQ does at least as well. And it does a whole lot more. So in terms of like clean EQ, obviously I've got, you know, um, various character EQs and things which I use all the time. But in terms of like a clean EQ and dynamic EQ, this just absolutely to me, it just blows everything else out of the water. So let's just go through um, what it has and what it can do. Like any other EQ you could expect, you double click and you get a node and you can move that around and so forth. And it's got a little uh, audition here. So you just hear that, just that band. 
and um, it's got straight ahead EQ controls here as you'd expect um, but what's great that so many EQs are missing is that you can control the slope of the bell and that is just so key to me um, I've got a couple of EQs, Pro-Qs, one of them, uh, an Air EQ uh, that can do this and it's just so important for me um, because there are lots of situations, especially when you're trying to fix something that's a problem, where the only way you can get it to happen transparently is by having a pretty steep bell. Um, so yeah, that's just amazing. Um, and it goes very steep if you want, uh, 96 dB per octave or you know, back to quite a shallow one. Um, and you can also mid-side it or left, right, got complete control of EQ uh, in a stereo spectrum. Any modern EQ needs that. But you've got a huge set of bell types and EQ type shelves and high pass, low pass, notch, band pass, a tilt shelf, a flat tilt, flat top bells, and all kinds of other uh, more unusual ones and some modeled after various types of like a SSL, EG, Neve, uh, API, and so forth. Um, you've got a huge range of EQ shapes. And in with each, each of these, you've got more. Um, and of course, you've just got the straight ahead uh, starting place that we've got here. So it's got a, a huge range of different shapes here. Um, okay, so now, where it really gets interesting is, because right now we've got like, the most fully featured straight ahead EQ. Uh, it's, it's got as many features as anyone other out there. Um, but before we get to the really exciting part, at least for me, <laughs> I'm just going to go over a few other interface things here. So we've got um, the usual stuff, copy, A, B, and so forth. Um, this allows you to grab on the, on the spectrum. If I just play this for a second, you can see, you know, like with Pro Q, only Like with Pro-Q, you can, you can grab part of the spectrum and move it. I actually find this one works a lot better and a lot easier than Pro-Q3. It just works, just you can see. I think it's because it snaps. It snaps to the peaks really nicely and then you just you don't have to grab exactly on the peak and then you've got it. It's brilliant. It's, it's, I never really use that feature in Pro-Q3 because I do occasionally, but I find it kind of hard to use. And this is just like, it's, it's so easy. So that's great. Um, then you've got um, phase flip bypass. Um, and then you've got this, which is a loudness equalizer, which Pro-Q has also. Um, and I find this one works really well. None of them are perfect. It's impossible to have a perfect one, but this works really well. This is fantastic. Again, missing from so many. Air EQ has this from EIOSIS, EOSIS but um, so if you have it, you can scale the whole thing with this. So if you've done your EQ and you think, ah, oh, great, but I think I've overdone it a little, um, you can do this and you can even go the other way and make it more extreme. It, wow, great, what a, what, a, what a nice feature to have. So um, you can change the, metering um, which is useful you can go from 64-bit internal to 117-bit so ultra high precision which i don't think there's any other eq on the market that does that and when it comes to using to dynamic eq which we haven't looked at yet that's the kind of exciting bit um, it can be really useful to have that high precision and even for eq so that's really great uh, more CPU, obviously, but if you've got some critical tasks which might benefit from it, you've got that there, and you can also oversample as well. So you've really got the full thing here in terms of go up to ultra, ultra high quality. Some settings in here with a bunch of useful stuff, which I won't go over, but what's really interesting here is, oh, and also you've got the keyboard, fantastic. You've got 
a choice of different phases that has some interesting stuff. Now, you, Pro Q and others have got a uh, linear phase and minimum phase. Um, you've got analog, which gets very close to how an analog uh, EQ would be, but this one is an interesting one because this one here means, because if you know anything about phase and EQ, analog EQs work with by by phase, uh, they shift the phase, and that's part and parcel of EQing. It, it's not like a byproduct of it, it's kind of how it works. So when you EQ something, you're going to be shifting the phase. Not necessarily a bad thing at all. And when you, when you go to linear phase, you have no phase shifting, and it's something you can only do in the digital world. But what we have here is a really interesting thing where it changes the phase response depending on where you are in the frequency spectrum. So in the low frequencies it goes to minimum phase so that you don't get pre-ringing. Um, and if you've ever, ever experimented much with linear phase EQs you, you will know that um, you can get significant pre-ringing happening where you can actually get like a kick drum that starts having a pre-resonance uh, that happens before the transient. Uh, which is generally speaking not what you want uh, if you're looking for a tight kick sound. So you have to be careful in the low frequencies with using linear phase, but in the high frequencies it's less of an issue. So, And what you do do is you remove phase problems So using linear phase. So what this does is it graduates the phase and as you get up near the high frequencies it's linear phase and when you get to the low frequencies it's minimum phase. And that's a first, as far as I know, and it's certainly uh, an innovation to have that. So that's the top bar here, and we've, oh yes, we've also got here the display. You can display um, how high the scale is, which is really useful to be able to do that. So everything you'd ever want, really, in, in terms of all this stuff and more, is, is in here. Oh, finally, it's got an output control here. Um, so... Now I'm just going to recall this setting. So what I've done here, as I set up, if I click here, you can see, if you click that little D here, it opens up this other panel where the dynamic part of the EQ is. And this is where all the really, really interesting stuff happens. Uh, and where it really moves ahead of other EQs. Um, so Let's go through this and what this can do. Um, if I take this node here, you can see it's set at a certain frequency and I've got a certain slope here. Um, so we've got the threshold here, as you'd expect. But what we've got here is we've got two things. We've got what happens when it, the signal is below the threshold and what happens when it's above the threshold. So when it's above the threshold, you can either expand or compress because this range control here which is the range at which it's going to you know uh, react like if I if I set this so that it's going to expand as I have here that means when it hits the threshold it's going to in EQ within that shape by this amount but you can also go into the negative so you can cut by that amount so this is like a boost and a cut and it's a range, a uh, maximum range that's going to go to, but within that maximum range, you've got the ratio. So this works like a normal ratio, but it's done in percentages, and that's interesting. Once you get used to that idea, it's actually really, really good. So the idea here is that if you put this at, say, 50%, that would mean that if something crossed the threshold by 10 dB, um, it would be reduced by 5 dB, okay? And then if you had it at 100%, it means if something crosses the threshold by 10 dB, it'll be reduced by 10 dB. So what's interesting here is that you can go beyond that 100%. So you could go to 200%, and that would mean that when it crossed the threshold by 10 dB, it would be reduced or expanded by 20 dB. So that's not something you can do with a traditional ratio control. So that's 
interesting in itself. And then the range control gives you the maximum. And this is something that is, again, it's missing from so many compressors and dynamic EQs that I always find very frustrating is the range control is just so useful because you can set up your ratio so that it's working nicely, but then occasionally you might get something which really exceeds a threshold by a lot. And it just gets crushed down in such a way that's very audible. And what's great about having a range control is it prevents it from ever getting compressed beyond a certain amount, which means if you get the odd thing that really gets louder for a second, you're not gonna get an over compressed sound all of a sudden. Really, really useful. And actually incredibly useful for if you're doing very subtle control of something, particularly in a mastering situation or even in a mixing situation, having that range control is, is really great. So the range control is like the maximum amount that it's gonna be able to go, positive or negative. And the ratio is the percentage that it's gonna get reduced or uh, expanded when it crosses the threshold, the percentage you know, of the amount it crosses, as I explained a minute ago. So incredibly flexible here. Um, and you can do that above or below. So you can do exactly the same thing for everything below the threshold. So you can say everything below the threshold is going to get expanded or compressed uh, by the, the ratio in exactly the same way. So I've never seen anything this comprehensive in any dynamic EQ. I mean, there are some compressors that have some things a bit like this, uh, not many. Um, but in a dynamic Q, EQ, this is just amazing. And it's what I've always wanted, this kind of flexibility in a dynamic EQ. So moving on, we've got attack and release. And again, that's so often, that's what I really miss in the Pro Q. There's no attack and release. And yeah, it's got a very good algorithm for figuring it out itself, but there are so many times when I really want to be able to control this and let the attack through or make sure I grab the attack and slow the release down and things like that. Um, it's missing from a lot of them and some of the, the ones that have attack and release are missing the slope or they're missing the ability to, you know, um, have a range or something else. It's, something's always missing in every single one if you look at, you know, the Waze one, the Sonox one, the uh, Fab Filter one, and there's a bunch of other ones. Um, They've all got some of these and none of them have them all. And I've always been so frustrated by that, that this is just amazing to have them all in one, in one plugin. So, but it's got more. So over here we have, this is how much it reacts to transients. So this means if it's a 10%, it means that, you know, out of the kind of RMS window that it has, which is a kind of small RMS window, um, it will react beyond that to transients 10, 10%. And if you turn this up, it's gonna react completely just to the transients. So that gives you a lot of control over, over what it reacts to. So if you really just wanted to grab the transients, you put it up to 100%. If you want it to mainly go for RMS, you, you, know, you take it down to some percentage down and in the middle, it's gonna be doing a bit of both depending on you know, what happens. It will be generally compressing uh, with a RMS window, but if a real loud transient comes through, it's going to grab it. So fantastic control here. Um, now here, uh, here's some real, I mean, there are some others that have this, um, not many dynamic EQs that have it, but there are some compressors that have this obviously, but now here's a real innovation here. So when you get to dynamic EQ, to me, this becomes even more useful because what it says is that it's not just going to listen to the frequency of, say, here, you know, one point, what is that, 1.4K. It's not just going to listen to this and um, think, well, if it hits, if it crosses a threshold, it's going to get expanded or, or reduced. It listens to it relative to the entire signal. So what does that mean? That means that if everything's really quiet, but relative to the quieter overall signal, that still needs reducing because it's sibilance or it's some other resonance or something that you're trying to fix or something that needs bringing out a bit more, um, you always have this problem, don't you? That like, it doesn't work until you're right up near the threshold. And so when it gets quieter, it stops working. And if you bring it down so it's working when it's quieter, 
it works too much. And so you end up having to, you know, automate it all over the place. What this does is it listens to the overall music and it, and it in a sense, changes the threshold relative to the overall music, but within that frequency area. So, and it's per band, all of this, all of this is per band. Hard to believe, but true, it's amazing. Um, so if that's not enough, it goes even further. Okay, so what we have here is that you can, the detection can be sidechain detection and the relative can also listen to the sidechain. So if you wanted to hear, have it reacting relative to your whole mix or some other part of the mix, you can do that. Same thing with the detection. Um, you can have it listen to the side chain or you can have the relative be the side chain or both. Yeah, it's just amazing. Um, of course, you can listen to that. But now, if I press these free buttons here, then these other controls light up. Now, this is something I have always wanted in a dynamic EQ, but I've never been able to find one that does this. Um, and this it's not something I need very often, but there's some times where you get a problem that nothing else will fix apart from this. And especially in a mastering context, there are sometimes you get a real problem mix for mastering. And, and, and there, the only way to fix the problem is to have one frequency area affect another frequency area. Have something like, for example, say you've got a kick that doesn't have enough of a click on it or too much of a click in a mix and there's no way to kill that off without killing off you know everything else in that area because you set the threshold and every time the vocal hits it, it it pulls it down or the snare so what i've always wanted to be able to do was to be able to take the detection and move it somewhere else this is exactly what this lets you do so i can say every time the kick hits it's going to pull down or pull up in this area so i can increase the click of the kick, which is too quiet, without triggering every time the snare or the vocal crosses a threshold. Amazing. And you can, you can change the, um, the cue of it, and it even shows you up at the top there, and it shows you down below here. Really great. And you can even change the relative, like what it's going to listen to, like relative to. Same area, some other area. Just stunning uh, work here. I um, think that's gone through all the controls there. Um, so uh, let's just have a little listen to this and see what it can do. So um, what I've got here is, um, again, this is just a demonstration purpose. This is not that I would do this, but I've got a, a boost here down at 111 hertz there. Um, and then I've got one up here at 1.4. So let's, let's just have a listen to this one. So I'm going to just turn this one off. And this is just on the piano. So you can see that. If you notice when I put this relative up, so what it's doing is every time those low notes cross the threshold, it's boosting them more. Now, again, it's not something I'd actually do, but just to show you what this can do. Um, so if I take the relative down, this is like a normal uh, dynamic EQ. Have a look at what happens. So you can see when I turn it up, it starts to react a lot more 
even though the volume of this piano is going kind of up and down, um, it's writing, it's listening to the whole thing in context and, th and thinking, how is this frequency doing re in relation to the rest of it, not just on its own? So that's incredibly useful. Um, and what I also like about this is there's a lot of nice details in this, like the display. If you watch, I've got a long release time here, and if you watch it, you can see it. You can see it comes down nice and slowly, and that's, again, it's just one of many details in it, and there are so many that don't really show you that release time, and it's just useful to see that it's, it's gliding down rather than just, you know, seeing the number. It's a minor thing, but it's just um, nice to have. So same thing up here, if I turn this one on and just have a look at this, it's the same thing, it's, it's going to react here. Now again, I wouldn't do that, it doesn't need that, but this is just as a demonstration thing. So here I've turned the onsets up quite high so that it reacts more to the transients. Fast attack time, um, again, fairly long release time because I, um, I wanted to come down kind of fairly naturally. But I mean, you've just got so much control here again, it doesn't really matter about that because I wouldn't do this anyway, but just it gives you an idea. Now I'm gonna turn this one on and here with this one, it's boosting when we're below the threshold. So when it's below the threshold, it's gonna boost, and when it hits a threshold, it pulls it down. So it's, it's, it's beautifully realized and programmed, this thing, and it, it really sounds very transparent. Considering how much boosting I'm doing here, um, it's very transparent sounding. Um, huge control over every aspect of the shape of the bells. I've not even, you know, started, uh, I've not demonstrated here any of the really amazing features like the ability to move what frequencies trigger the different uh, shapes and everything. Um, but I hope you get kind of an idea of what this thing's capable of. Um, let me just pull this down into the negative here. So I think you can see the level of sophistication this thing has. Uh, it really is, um, for me anyway, it really is the EQ to, to beat all other EQs. It, it does everything, it sounds great. Um, it's got a huge amount of resolution. Um, it's got every feature that every other dynamic EQ has all in one EQ. Um, it, to me, it sounds just as good as Pro-Q or, or any other like really high-end EQ. It's so easy to use. Um, everything about it is is slick and easy to use, and 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 has that kind of high end professional feel about it. So, yeah, I would really highly recommend this um, EQ. It is now my go to EQ. As I said, I haven't used the Pro Q3 since I got this, um, and that used to be my go to. Um, because it just does everything that does and a whole lot more. So, uh, yeah, I hope you uh, found this useful. And if you did, uh, please give the video a like 
and uh, ring the bell and subscribe and I hope to see you next time.